Good morning students. We are now in multiprocessor and parallel computer architecture. In my previous class, I have talked about the multi-stage interconnection network. We have seen in multi-stage interconnection network, the network or the interconnection network is made of switches which are connected by stages that's why it is called multi-stage interconnection network or it is parallel computer and we have seen it is a type of packets switch network we have draw a 8 into 8 omega network in my previous class we have also seen to draw an 8 into 8 omega network where 8 is the CPU number and 8 is the memory module. The switching stage required will be log n base 2. Each stage contain n by 2 and total number of switch required n into log n base 2 by 2. So, we have covered up this topic in my previous lecture. Now, today's topic is Delta Network. which is a type of multi-stage interconnection network. Now, we will see a 2 square into 3 square delta network. So, 2 square into 3 square means there will be 2 input, 3 output and another one will be 2 input, 3 output 2 into 3 means 2 input, 3 output. Why it is called 2 square? Because it is the num given to the delta network where there is 2 input and 3 output. Next, this is goes for the input stage and this will be the or you can tell it as source and this is the destination in my destination there will be also 2 to 3 that means 2 input 3 output this is my source this is my destination now I will denote it, e, this point as 0 and this is 1 this will be 0 this is 1 and I will denote it at 0 1 2 this will be it ports number in similar way it will be denoted like this now the connection will be look like this that means this port number 0 will be connected to destination port number 0 and this port number 1 will be connected with this 0 and its second number port will be connected with this zero number port of the destination so sure? this is we have made for the first source or first source node in the second node, node we will make a connection to this one we will make a connection to this one and we will make a connection to this one. So, this is the interconnection between a 2 square into 3 square and this network is called 2 square into 3 square delta network. Now, in your semester, there another question comes that is draw a 3 square into 5 square delta network. In the similar fashion, what we will do? 3 square into 5 square means in the source field there will be 3 node and 3 square into 5 square means there will be 3 input and here will be your 5 output in the similar fashion I will draw this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 output 3 input and 5 output now I will denote it as 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2 and I will denote this one as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4.
next this is for the input stage or this is the source and the destination part will be consist of how many will be consist of five next there will be in the similar fashion there will be three input and five output the next thing we will have to do denote it that means it is 0 1 2 and this will be 0 1 2 3 4 so 0 1 2 3 4 so in the similar fashion I will denote it next how we will connect this is source number 1 or first source so for the first source the connection will be from this node it will go to the always first node so from this one it will goes to the always first node from 2 to 0 and it is 3 to 0 and it is 4 to 0 so this connection will be known as 0 0 0 0 this is known as 1 0 this will be as 2 0 this will be as 3 0 this will be as 4 0 so the connection will be with the always the first node or first port next this will be always the second port that means this will be 0 1 this will be 1 1 this will be 2 1 in the similar fashion it will be 3 1 and this will be your 4 1 so this is for the second node and for the remaining node it will connect to the last node that means it will connect with 0 2 1 2 this will be your 2 2 this will be your 3 2 and this will be your 4 2 so in the 3 square into 5 square delta network there will be some source stage this will be called as source and this will be a destination in the source field there will be three node and there will be three input and five output in a similar way in the destination part there will be three input and five output and we make an interconnection network in the manner so we can conclude that we have drawn a two square into three square delta network as well as three square into five square delta network the next topic is difference between CISC architecture and RISC architecture. CISC means complex instruction set computer and RISC means reduced instruction set computer. Now we will see the difference between CISC and RISC. To draw the difference between CISC and RISC, we have the CISC risk and we will define it by a parameter so the first parameter will be number one will be instruction set size and format that means for the CISC and risk processor what will be the instruction set size you know what is instruction set the complete set of instruction that is understood by a machine that is called instruction set and the format means what type of format or what size or what is the number of bit total bit it can understand that is called your format so in case of CISC architecture the it will be a large set of instruction set with variable format that means it may be 16 bit or it may be 32 bit per instruction now in case of risk this is a 
small set of instruction set with fixed format and it can understand of size 32 bit next we will find the addressing mode what do you mean by addressing mode addressing mode means the method by which we can insert from where to fetch the data where to store the data as well as the operation method that is known as addressing mode we have seen that there are many type of addressing mode likewise we have seen direct addressing mode the example of direct addressing mode was LDA 2050H LDA 2050H means load in the accumulator from the memory location 2050H so in the instruction the source of the data the destination of the result as well as the operation code is defined that was your addressing mode now in case of CISC architecture 12 to 24 type addressing mode are used but here we can use 3 to 5 type so this is your type of addressing mode now we are coming to general purpose register we know that what is register register is a storage unit that can store only one bit of information there are two type of register one is your general purpose another one is special purpose general purpose means where we can store the data as well as address and in special where we can store only the address here the general purpose register used from 8 to 24 types but here we are we can use 32 192 types now we'll come to computation speed the computation speed will be for this case will be slow and for this case will be faster now we'll come to CPI that means clock per instruction for this 2 to 15 and for this most of the cases 1 but average CPI less than 1.5 and now we come to the example CPI means clock per instruction that means how many clock cycles are required to fetch an instruction now we are coming to example the example is Intel 408 and here the example is power PC Apple this follows the risk architecture and this follows the CISC architecture now the time comes to concrete our today's lecture so in today's lecture we have given a brief description about previous class that means your multi-stage interconnection network where we have seen that or again I can remind you that in multi-stage interconnection network the switches are connected into stages that's why it is called multi-stage interconnection network or it is called parallel computer you have seen it is type of packet switch network next 
we have done the 2 square into 3 square delta network. 2 square into 3 square means where there will be 2 input and 3 output in the source. There will be 2 node and in the destination there will be 3 node. We have made the connection among themselves. Next, we have seen the 3 square into 5 square delta network. In the same fashion, in 3 square into 5 square, there will be 3 input and 5 output. And in the source, there will be 3 node. And in the destination, there will be 5 node. And we have make the interconnection network among themselves. Next, we have make a difference between CISC architecture and RISC architecture. CISC is complex instruction set computer and RISC is reduced instruction set computer. Why it is called CISC? Because in early days of computer history, most computer followed complex instruction set. But in later on, when the hardware cost decreases, then we move to reduced instruction set code where the complex instruction are made or are reduced in a very simple instruction. That's why it is called risk. And we made a difference in terms of some parameter. We have made a difference in terms of instruction set size and format, addressing mode, GPR, CPU control unit, computation speed, CPI, and we have given an example. Our next topic will be non von Neumann architecture. That's all for today's session. Thank you. Good morning, students. Now, we are in parallel and distributed computer module. In my previous class, I have talked about Delta Networking. We have found two type of Delta Network. One was your 2 square into 3 square Delta Network and another was 3 square into 5 square Delta Network. In 2 square and 3 square Delta Network, we found in the one side there was source there were two nodes or two processor and in another hand there were three processor and each processor input port was two and output port was three and we have seen the interconnection between the processor next this processor is replaced by 3 square into 5 square delta network. In the similar fashion, we have done all the interconnection. Next, we have studied the CISC versus RISC. CISC means complex instruction set computer and RISC means reduced instruction set computer. In early days of computer history, the CISC architecture was used because at that time, the complex instruction was processed but later on when the cost of the hardware is decreases we are moving from CISC to RISC and we have seen the difference between CISC and RISC through different parameter like instruction set size and format for CISC the instruction set size was large and the format was variable but in case of RISC we have seen that it has a small set with fixed format that equal to 30 bit. We have make a comparison in respect of addressing mode. In CISC we have used 12 to 24 types addressing mode. But in RISC we have used 3 to 5 types addressing mode. We have seen we have used general purpose register in case of RISC is 8 to 24 but in risk we have used 32 to 192 
the computation speed in case of CISC is slow but in case of RISC it is faster. The example was Intel 408 and RISC was PowerPC, Apple etc. Now, the today's copy kick non von Neumann architecture. We have studied von Neumann architecture in our third stem. In our third stem, we have seen that the von Neumann was a scientist and according to his principle, he described the computer architecture basically in three point point number one what was that both program and data are stored in the same read write memory point number two was they accessed by their location and point number three was they can execute sequentially but uh, what is non von Neumann architecture this is, this is the syllabus of this current semester so any computer in which the underlying module of computation is different from standard von Neumann architecture is known as non von Neumann architecture. So the underlying module computation is different from standard von Neumann that is called your non von Neumann. So if we make it a point, point number one will be this architecture can be thus without the concept of sequential flow. Sequential flow means without concept of program counter. What was program counter? Program counter keeps the address of the next instruction to the to be executed. So a non von Neumann architecture will be the concept of program counter. Next point number two concept of variable is used in this architecture in which a value may be stored and subsequently changed. The example of this will be data flow machine. In data flow machine or in data flow architecture there is the concept of variable is used where we can store a value or subsequently we can change. So this is non von Neumann architecture. Now we will come to another concept that is called CFG and DFG. Now what is CFG? The full form of CFG is control flow graph and full form of DFG is data flow graph. Now coming to what is control flow graph? We know that the program is a series of addressable instruction the next instruction 
to be executed depends on what happened during execution of current program and the next instruction is triggered by program counter here the smallest unit is called task the beginning of new task require previous task success or failure now we'll give an example by which we can understand the control program suppose we have given a program to determine the highest number or the bigger number among three suppose we have given three number we have to find which number is bigger so to understand the control flow graph let us first draw the flow chart to determine the big number among three number so the flow chart will be look like this first we have to initialize a b c the three variable is initialized next we will check by a condition whether a greater than c or not if a greater than c is true then a is bigger and if it becomes false then we have to check whether b greater than c or not if it is true then we can tell that b is greater else we will can tell that c is greater so this is the formula of how a number is bigger among three number is evaluated and this is done through a flow chart in the flow chart we have seen that this is or the flow goes like control or the flow is from one step to another the next step cannot start until the first step is evaluated so this is the example of control flow graph now we'll come to data flow graph in data flow graph there is no concept of control it is a large powerful computer that has a number of processor are physically connected together with a large amount of memory and backing storage such computer are highly parallel in that way they can 
carry out large amount of task at the same time now if we make it as a point wise first point will be it is driven by the availability of the data no program counter will be here used smallest unit is called component and one component will not work for another component success or failure it can be pictorially represented or its architecture can be pictorically represented as suppose this is process unit and there will be a input output switch next there will be a some matching unit and after that there is program storage so this is data flow architecture now the time comes to conclude our today's lecture in our today's lecture we have seen that what is non von neumann architecture a non von neumann architecture will be the concept of sequential flow of control here the concept of variable is used next we have seen the control flow graph as well as data flow graph in case of control flow graph we have seen how a program is executed that is the main funda of control flow graph and in data flow graph or the data flow machine can be defined as when there is a large powerful computer is available by assembling a number of processor which are physically connected together with large amount of memory and backing storage and it is not driven by control it is driven by the data here no program counter is used and we have seen the other characteristics of data flow we have seen the data flow architecture in my next class i will discuss about the data flow graph and how it is being implemented using instruction so this will be discussed in my next class